Hi everybody, I'm James Golding and welcome to Gunroom TV Food. So today we're going to be cooking partridge and partridge is obviously one of the earlier birds in the season so it's quite nice because I'm actually able to do a dish that's a little bit summery and a little bit autumnal and I'll talk a bit about that as I go through. So for this dish we're going to need obviously some partridge breast, uh, some apples, we've got some lovely radishes, rocket salad, pancetta, egg and if you can get them or if you want to order them one of these most incredible black truffles from me on Valley Truffle. Um, we won't be using all this truffle this is a particularly large one but um, we'll talk about these and why they're so incredible later on. So to begin with we need to get a few bits working. The pancetta is going to be served crispy so what I'm going to do is get this on now and get it crisping up while we're prepping the other bits. I've got a non-stick pan here on a low heat, I'm going to add in a small amount of cold pressed rapeseed oil and that's just really to get it going and then add in our pancetta and we want this to cook quite slowly, I don't want to fry this too heavily because it will burn and go bitter so just let it sort of tick over while you're prepping the other bits. The next job is to get our apple sauce on, now you can use Bramley apples um, I quite like to use eating apples, so these are just some uh, Braeburn apples which um, I think work quite well with this. Uh, we're not making a sweet apple sauce, but because we're using eaters, uh, you'll find that you do get a natural amount of, of sugar in it. So, I'm going to peel these guys down. Bramley apples are fantastic, but uh, they're not quite ready at the moment, and that's, that's the kind of the beauty for, for having partridge, is that you're actually able to use some of these amazing late summer ingredients and um, partridge if you haven't had partridge or you're thinking about using it it's a great introductory bird it's it's white meat sort of very similar to uh, chicken it hasn't got an incredibly strong gamey flavor so it's really good if you're you know you want to serve it to the family or to your kids you know they they, they would probably uh, uh, you know quite like that less sort of gamey flavor to begin with and um, it's really good for you. I mean, it's really high in selenium. It's really um, uh, it's low in fat, so it's great for people that are trying to lose weight or are trying to watch their diet, or even if you're a healthy kind of person. It's very high in protein, so it's good for uh, active people. And this also is quite a light dish. You know, if you think about game, a lot of people think you know it's got to be braised or you know cooked for a long period of time. We're literally just going to sear this and it's going to be served medium. So you've got that lovely juicy flavour running through the salad. So for this apple sauce, it's just cut it really rough. You know, you don't want to spend too much time. You can hear the uh, pancetta starting to fry there in the background. So you need to remember to keep half an eye on that. If you're doing a lot of uh, apple sauce, it's quite important to put lemon juice in the um, in with the apple that stops it turning brown but we're only going to be uh, making a little bit I do like to add some lemon juice just for a little bit of acidity while it's cooking and we're going to put about about sort of two tablespoons of water in here and what that does is that it gets the apple cooking nice and quickly so get this apple on There we go, so medium to high heat on the apple and you can see now this is starting to fry up and it's quite incredible, it goes translucent. This is a pinch of salt pancetta, so this is made by Mr Bartlett down in New Milton, it's a British curing company, they make some fantastic cured meats and all sorts of different salumis and, and stuff that we use at the pigs. So we're going to keep that frying now and keep half an eye on the, uh, on the apple sauce. I'm actually going to put a little knob of butter in with the apple sauce as well and that'll, that'll give it a lovely richness. So I'm going to add that in. Notice I haven't put any sugar and that's because I want it to be quite, quite tart. While that's happening we're going to prep our garnishes. So like I said before we've got some radishes. You can use all different types of radish, all different types of colours, you can use torpedo radishes, whatever you'd like. It adds a nice pepperiness to the dish, but also a lovely bit of colour. And I'm actually using 
a truffle shaver for this job. Now you can use a mandolin or if you're very skilled you can use a knife. But basically you want to get it as thin as possible without cutting the ends of your fingers off. And um, once you've shaved these radishes we're going to put some nice cold water on and what that does is it makes them lovely and translucent. So those are the radishes done. I've got some boiled eggs as well and I quite like boiled eggs with salads. I think it adds a lovely kind of flavour to, to the, uh, the dish. And I've just cooked these for about six minutes. So they're nicely hard boiled. I didn't want them too runny. And probably one egg will be enough. So we're going to add some salt. It's very important to season your eggs. So we've got some blackthorn salt here that we're going to season with. And um, this is the truffle. So truffles are in the mushroom family. They, they obviously don't grow above ground. You can see there's a little bit of uh, earth on this. They grow underground, they're the spore. So if you think about mycelium, mycelium is one of the largest organisms in the world and it's basically the, mo you know, the mother, the body of the mushrooms. And it all, if you imagine it like a spider's web underground, what this mycelium likes to do is basically sit around the base of trees, especially oak trees. Um, or white oaks and it spores and that's how you find these incredible truffles forming around the roots and back in the day you'd have pigs that would go and find these guys and they'd root around and sort of dig them up the unfortunate thing about the pigs though was that the pigs like to eat the truffles so that's not so good if you're a truffle producer so fast forward a few years and now we use dogs and the Meon Valley truffle uh, company they're producing these summer truffles so they're not quite as pungent as say Alba truffles or say you know a sort of Provence but they're British they're good value and they're very tasty so um, if you're interested in buying them you can get them on their website and um, they're a great company to support so let's check our pancetta as you can see now that's starting to color up nicely um, probably got about another two or three minutes to go but you can see all that fat has now come out of the pancetta and it's starting to fry up so we're really going to drop this heat right down now because we don't want that burning my apple sauce is looking good on the back we'll give that a little stir so you want to make sure that any of the apple that's poking out of the the top is actually in there and this isn't like a puree we're not producing an apple puree this is just going to be a rough apple sauce so the idea is that you know you still want to have lovely little chunks of apple in there that you can eat while it's breaking down. So while the pancetta's finishing off frying, I'm going to chop a bit of flat leaf parsley. And um, I love parsley in pancetta, I think it looks beautiful. Flat leaf parsley is obviously the Italian variety. You can use uh, curly parsley. Um, I quite like purcell as well. Purcell's a new variety that's coming through now. It's a hybrid cross between parsley and celery. Um, it works really really well in dishes like this because the celery gives it a fantastic uh, flavour. So we're going to chop this down. We're not going to chop it too fine. I don't want to bruise it. Just run the knife through a couple of times. We'll set that to one side. So let's check this uh, pancetta. Pancetta is now lovely and golden brown. So I'm going to add this now into the bowl. And what I'm trying to do is leave as much of that fantastic flavoursome fat in the bottom of this pan. And with the fat that we've got left in this pan, we're basically going to keep this on the heat and we're going to fry our partridge in that pancetta fat. And that's going to give us so much flavour. So we're going to lightly season the uh, partridge, not too much because don't forget the pancetta has been cured so there's a certain amount of salt in there as well. And we'll season with a bit of black pepper there. So let's get this nice and hot. Bring that back up to temperature and cook our partridge. Now we're going to be cooking this partridge all the way in the pan. We're not going to put it in the oven. What we want is to get a lovely colour on all sides of this partridge 
and then we're going to let it rest. So, there we go. So that's the sound. There we go, as it starts to fry. So we're going to get a, get a really good colour on the uh, skin side first, and then we're going to flip it over and let that continue cooking. So let's check our apples while we're waiting for that. As you can see, they are still, still got a good form. We're going to keep those cooking down. They will eventually break down. I'm going to add a bit more water to those and keep those cooking. So our truffle. So the truffle, as you can see inside, it's, it's, it's a sort of lighter colour and that's how you tell the difference between a summer truffle and uh, say a Perigord truffle. So the Perigord truffle will be black in the middle and these guys are slightly lighter. The smell though is, is very similar. These guys tend to be a bit more earthy but you can still get that lovely truffle smell in there. So what I tend to do is get a nail brush, just give it a good old uh, scrub, make sure you get any um, bits of dirt out from the crevices and um, you're good to go. So that's ready to go for when we plate up. Okay. So, for the partridge, you can see that I've just turned those over. I'm going to add in a knob of butter, and what that'll do is give it a good sheen. When I say sheen, we're going to use a spoon just to nappe the excess fat and butter over these beautiful partridge breasts. We don't want to serve these red hot. We basically want them to be kind of room temperature. So, leave them in the pan, let them rest, which will mean that they'll soften up, that'll allow all those tight muscle fibres to just relax a little bit. So when we carve them, all those juices stay in the breast of the partridge. The apple sauce has started to come together now. You see we've just crushed this down. I'm also going to add in some butter. And what that does is that basically brings it all together. So there's excess liquids that you've got. That butter will make it all nice and thick and, and basically give us a bit more body to the sauce. Okay, it's time to plate up our dish. So we're gonna begin with our apple puree or apple sauce. And this is just gonna go straight in the middle of the plate. Try to sort of drain off any excess liquid because we don't want that all over the plate. So we give that a, just in the center, like so. Partridge is now nicely rested. Place that on the board. Don't forget the little fillets. And the rest of the fat from that, I'm going to add back into the pancetta with a good pinch of uh, parsley. So, our pheasant breasts are absolutely perfect. We're just going to cut those on the angle. Look at that, perfect medium. Keep those together, cut on the angle, and we're going to place these onto the apple sauce side by side. And then we'll give the this a good stir. And this pancetta with all the fat and all that is going to basically be our, our dressing. I'm going to add in a small amount of the uh, rapes oil and give that a stir. We're going to place some of our egg on the dish. Probably three pieces should do it. Like that. We have our um, truffle ready and we take some of this radish out the bowl so it can start to drain. Now we're going to use our pancetta so this is lovely and crispy, it's still a little bit warm, which is what you want. And we'll nicely dress this. You don't want too much, I mean there's probably a bit too much pancetta here for the dish, but people love bacon so you can never have too much. And then a little bit of that liquid around the outside. Now we dress it with our radish. And this radish, don't forget, will add a fantastic peppery kind of addition to our dish. We're now going to add our truffle. Now, if you have one, 
use a truffle slicer. These are fantastic. You can pick them up on any sort of, you know, eBay or Amazon or anything like that. And this just works really, really well when you're shaving your truffle. So we're going to add a bit of this truffle over the top. And finally, just to give a bit of green colour, I've just got a little bit of garden rocket. And the garden rocket just makes the whole dish pop. And then a little bit, of, bit more oil just to lighten it up. And there we go, we have our roasted partridge with uh, egg, radishes, a bit of pancetta, and finished off with meal and valley truffle.